everyone. Um, I want to say sorry for not uploading for ages. Um, I wasn't well for a while and then the weather was miserable so I couldn't go out and um, you know I haven't been feeling too great uh, for a little while so I'm sorry for not uploading. Um, it's It's been difficult, um, just a little kind of, I don't know, bit of a talk is that you know it's coming up to the year anniversary of my mum passing and um she loves loved Christmas and it's been quite difficult for me to kind of I've just kind of slumped into a bit of a depression state and um you know and kind of I feel like maybe I'm going a bit psychotic again. Um, if you don't know, I have uh, schizophrenia. Um, I'm going a little bit psychotic again. Uh, it kind of happens sort of through summer and, and then like start of winterish time and then I kind of get a bit normal <laughs> again. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so I'm, I'm sorry for not uploading. Um, I can't promise any regular uploads uh, recently. Um, I don't want to promise that and then kind of not do it. So I'm sorry about that. Um, um, you know, probably over the Christmas period, I won't be uploading much. I'm, I'm really not too sure. Um, so anyway, today we are talking about something a little bit different. Um, I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Um, and it's a video about the medication that I was on uh, called quetiapine, um, also known as Ser Seroquel, Ser Ser Seroquel, I don't know. But quetiapine, it is a, an atypical antipsychotic. Uh, it's also prescribed for anxiety. Um, and I have been on it since I was 18. So that's how, how old am I? I'm only 24 six years I mean, near, about nearly six years um and i wanted to talk about this is because i haven't seen much research on the effects of quetiapine on psychotic people um specifically people with schizophrenia because i like you know when you get those little leaflets in your like say you go to the pharmacy you pick up your pills and in the box there'll be a little leaflet listing how to take it what to you know side effects why you should go to the um doctor if anything you know like you know sort of life threat, all that kind of stuff um these symptoms that i have been documenting recently uh not symptoms sorry side effects were not included on any list i could find the only reason i managed to find that this was actually that might be related to my quetiapine is because I would type in specifically like quetiapine and X side effect and then I would come up with like forums or stuff like that where people are discussing but I haven't seen any actual research and so I don't know how long this is going to be I've already recorded this uh this uh once and it ended up being over an hour long so but please 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 stick it out because and maybe give it a like for the algorithm a comment a share because had i known i would have been like this had i known that i would have gotten these side effects let me tell you i would not have gone on this medication or at least i wouldn't have upped it to over 100 um because i lost a good few years of my life um and so I'm not saying be scared of this drug, don't go on this drug or go off this drug or anything like that. I just, I want people to be able to make an informed decision because had I, like I said, had I known, I probably would have been, I would have, one, maybe if I decided, yes, I will up my dose, one, insisted on regular checkups, you know, regular monitoring, I would have insisted on it and I didn't get that and Two, I definitely would have thought twice. I would have thought, right, do I want to go to this high? I would, do I want to go to this dose? Do I want to, you know, I would have definitely thought about it. And so if this can reach other people who are maybe thinking about going on a drug like this, or maybe you are on the drug like this and thinking of upping their dose, I, I, want, to, I want to get this out there to help people like me because, like I said, it's generally, like I said, prescribed for psychosis. It's a kind of one of the ones that you prescribe for schizophrenia. Um, 
and I wish I'd I wish I'd never gone on it, uh, to be quite frank with you. Um, you know, so this video is gonna be about this drug. It's gonna be, you know, kind of it's semi scripted. I've got my notes up here. Um and so I'm going to be referring back to them. It's kind of semi-scripted, but it's more just a bit of a conversation about it. So, yeah, please like, subscribe, do all of that thing. But if you could share this, that would be really great because I really think there needs to be, one, more awareness and two, more research, you know. So if you could share this, that would be wonderful. Um, if not, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just get straight into this. All right, so the first thing I want to say is that I am not a doctor. I'm not a pharmacist. I'm not a chemist. I'm not on anything. I don't have the qualifications. This isn't me giving you professional medical advice. I am simply sharing my experience on this drug in the hopes of, you know, maybe ma raising some awareness because, you know, I wouldn't have done this had I not actually found out that this happened to other people. Um, you know, if it was just me, I would have thought, well, I've just had a bad reaction. But the fact that other people like me are documenting these side effects, then. So I'm not giving you professional medical advice. I'm not saying go off the drug. Please, 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 please talk to your doctor if you're worried. I am not a doctor. You know, I don't have any kind of qualifications in this. For fuck's sake, I've got an art degree. I don't have any <laughs> medical qualifications. So um, I'm not giving you any medical advice. I, I can tell you, I can give you advice based on my personal experience, but please speak to your doctor. I'm not a doctor. Um, you know, don't, for the love of God, don't just go off your meds. Don't go off them. Don't go cold turkey. I mean, for fuck's sake, that can be so dangerous. So dangerous. Um, I've only ever missed a dose twice purely by accident because it was stuff like I didn't realize it was bank holiday or I just forgot because I was staying somewhere and so sorry I went blank um yeah only ever missed a dose once or twice and it was fucking horrible let me tell you that it was absolutely atrocious I hated it so don't you know if you're gonna go off this drug you've got to taper it and you've got to do it under the supervision of a medical professional um so please don't just go off don't get freaked out and go off this drug i i don't want anyone to do that um so yeah if you are concerned about any of this i suggest speaking to your doctor anything you hear in this speak to your doctor you know and maybe you know, like maybe keep a little diary of the symptoms, not symptoms, sorry, I keep saying those side effects that you're experiencing, you know, don't just, you know, don't just take a YouTube video as medical advice is what I'm saying, um, because that's not very smart. Um, so, yeah, don't just go off, speak to your doctor, you know, you know what's best for you. And if you don't, your doctor probably does. I don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to first tell you about why I went on quetiapine and the kind of how the doses were upped. Um, so I went on quetiapine because, as I said before, I'm schizophrenic. Um, and I basically had a bitter, or I say a bitter, it was a massive psychotic breakdown. Um... And when I started coming out of it, I was like, oh, shit, I was just very badly psychotic. I hadn't been psychotic like that for a very long time. Um, I had childhood schizophrenia. Now, that's, you know, quite rare as it comes. Um, and there might be a couple of different reasons why it's, it was so early onset. I'm not going to get into it. But um, I kind of I've dealt with it all my life. Um and so I've had psychosis before, but I very rarely, before when I was like 17 to 18, had such a massive break. And it must have been over a year that I would, when I say over a year, I mean under a year, just under a year that I was psychotic. And I don't remember much of it, um, frankly. Uh, psychosis, for me anyway, messes with my memory. Um, so... 
after I started coming out of it, I realised that, oh shit, I need help. So I went to the doctor and I told him, um, no, I didn't go to, I went to the doctor who referred me to the local, um, oh, what are they called? Community mental health team. And um, I'm going to be honest, the one in my, um, the one in my local catchment area back where I used to live is shit. Um, but I saw a psychiatrist there and he took my history and blah, blah, blah. You know, he knew that my birth mother um, was schizophrenic. And so he was like, right, you know, you've clearly been psychotic. So I'm going to put you on, you know, I'm going to prescribe you this drug. You know, it's because honestly, nothing was really working. The only thing that was working for me was illegal drugs and so he was basically like you know I was basically sent to rehab first and then that's a lie he he referred me to rehab and at the same time he prescribed me 25 milligrams of quetiapine um and then that was fine great wonderful but then some more and more shit started happening in my life and I wasn't seen, didn't seem to be getting better. So he upped me then to, it's either 75 or 100, I forget. And then I jumped up to 200 and then I jumped up to 250, then 300. And at one point I was taking nearly, I, I, I kind of went between, because I was given some to take at night, which was the larger dose. And I was also given 25 milligrams to take during the day. And so I took between 375 and 400 depending on the day if I needed that extra 25 to top me up which generally I, I did um and so because I was just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and I you know my psych the psychiatrist who originally was seeing me he decided to just up and leave and then I moved um and then I finally after a long 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 struggle got through to the uh mental health team where I am now. I have a wonderful therapist. He specializes in psychosis. Um, he's partially funded by a charity, um, which means that it's not just NHS funding because the NHS is shit for mental health. Absolutely bollocks. And yeah, so I jumped up to 400 milligrams. Now that's not the highest dose that someone can go on quetiapine. Um, quetiapine, for all its flaws that I'm gonna list here, is actually a very safe drug and you know <laughs> uh, so it's very the one of the reasons why they gave it to me is because I have a history of overdose attempts and so they you know they were like quetiapine is so difficult to overdose on it's so 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 difficult to overdose on you know you can take up to a thousand and be fine well not fine but you won't die is the point probably 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 but generally it's considered quite a safe drug and it's very hard to overdose on so even if i did hoard and hoard and hoard the 25 milligrams it still wouldn't really have made a dent i probably would just have fallen asleep for a week you know so um but yeah so that's how i got on quetiapine um so first in this, the way this is going to be structured is I'm going to list the physical side effects. I might talk about a couple of them, you know, I might chat about them and then I'm going to list the uh, psychological side effects, which uh, there are many, many more of them. And those are the ones that are the main issue for me, the psychological ones. Um, so anyway, right, let's just I'm going to stop yapping about nonsense because I'm starting to lose my train of thought and I'll just end up a moving and eyeing throughout this thing. So, physical side effects. I'm sorry, two seconds. Physical side effects. Uh, breathlessness. Now, when I say that, I don't mean, you know, when you walk up a bit of a hill, you're panting a little bit. No, I mean that <gasps> kind of you can't get air in your lungs. Now, listen, listen, listen. I have had COVID. That was a dream compared to the breathlessness that um, quetiapine gave me. Um, and so, it, 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 yeah, it would, it was really bad. And I spoke to my care coordinator about it and he was like, well, is it bad? And I was just kind of like, I'm not dead if that's what you mean. But 
no and according to my husband i also um i would stop breathing in the night it was kind of like sleep apnea but without actually having sleep apnea it just very much looked like that so you know you get the idea i would stop breathing and then i would just suddenly take a deep like rattling breath and yeah it it it, it was ridiculous um but yeah and along with that came with um an increased and very irregular heartbeat so you know i would my heart would beat really fast it would be like so you know and obviously that didn't help the breathlessness and yeah i remember just um when i jumped up to like i said about 400 i would put my finger on my pulse and i would be like jesus christ am i dying um but and what i didn't learn was that actually you're supposed to go to emergency services if you get this but i kind of just assumed that when i brought it up to my care coordinator and i said i'm getting these and he was like don't care i just assumed it wasn't such a big deal but yes it is a big deal so if you get that please speak to a doctor and say yes it is a big deal um and I also had an inability to swallow when I took it. Again, this is more related to when I went on the higher doses. I've now decreased my my decreased my dose down to 25 milligrams, which is great. I feel so much better. But when I jumped up to the higher doses, I couldn't swallow. It was like my tongue had swollen up. And try as I might, I couldn't swallow. I would just end up, I'd try and take a drink because, you know, this uh, drug also gives you a dry mouth and I couldn't swallow it. It would just come straight back out. Um, so that was really, really, really shit. Um, and I hated it. Um, and as I said, dry mouth, which caused some cavities. Um, now I've also got some other issues um, with my teeth. A um, lot of different factors. It's not really important to this conversation, but what I will say is that it gives you a dry mouth which means you're not having the protective saliva and also the breathlessness. Um, I would be breathing, panting through an open mouth, which meant that I was drying out my mouth even more, which eventually, yeah, it caused some cavities. I've never had very good teeth, but it definitely got worse. Now, I'm just going to say this now is that I've always had most or some, you know, most of these issues. But the thing is, is that what I'm saying is that it got you know, like times 10, like 10 times worse when I went on quetiapine. It made a lot of my symptoms, both physical and mental, much worse. So, yeah, so dry mouth causing cavities. Uh, oh, this that also ties in with I got nausea and vomiting. Um, and I didn't vomit very much, but my God, the nausea was horrendous. And... I don't know if that's because of another side effect, which is increased appetite. I mean, anyone who's taken quetiapine will know that <laughs> weed munchies, you get, yeah, you smoke a bit of weed, you got the munchies. It has nothing on the quetiapine munchies. I mean, I was just, <laughs> I, I would, I would, it, and it wasn't just, you know, oh, I'm quite hungry. It was that there was like this great big cavernous pit in my stomach that just could not be filled and I would just be eating and eating and eating and I'd still go to bed with my stomach rumbling um and you know I completely as well lost any inhibitions and so you know once I would I ate I I couldn't find anything to eat so I ate paper um I would eat uh I I once ate a massive jar of mayo just right out of the jar because there was nothing else to eat I would eat stuff that I didn't even like simply because I was so goddamn hungry. So, yeah, and as a result of this, I managed to put on about five stone, um, which I'm fine with putting on a bit of weight, but yeah, I did rock it up to just on the overweight category, and that's not good for my physical disabilities. So, yeah, that was really, really bad. Um, and along with that came increased cholesterol, uh, triglycerides in your blood, you know, all the increased um, blood sugar. Uh, I started having diabetes sy sy symptoms. Um, 
and you know i don't know if i have diabetes but you know i've had a blood test hopefully i'll get the results back soon but yes increased cholesterol and triglycerides which you know it's just basically the lipids in your blood is increased and <clears throat> again this is something that should be monitored regularly and um, you should be getting a blood panel every now and then so if you haven't had one either yet or for a while go to your doctor book a blood panel because they're supposed to regulate you very tightly on this drug especially when you're on higher doses um and i <sighs> Oh, sorry, I keep blanking out. I just, this is really difficult for me to talk about. Anyway, uh, where was I? Increased appetite, increased cholesterol. Ah, oh, yeah, lipids. Get a blood panel. Um, yes, that's what I was talking about. Because there's such a thing as metabolic syndrome, I believe it's called. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, and so, and which is a dangerous side effect of these, uh, the, this medication. So. Yeah, go get a blood panel, um, you know, ask them to check your lipids, your B12, your folic acid and your insulin. Um, yeah, so do that, please. Okay. And right, fatigue. <laughs> this isn't the fatigue I mean when I say that you're a bit sleepy, you're a bit brain foggy. This was kind of i get that anyway i get i have you know like fatigue problems um i is a part and parcel of my physical disability this was worse the thing is is that cotiopine in these doses has a sedation effect and so it's you know and with this drug as well it has a 24 hour cycle so you don't take it and then it you know burns off after so many hours it's 24 hours which is why you also should take it at the, around the same time each day so i was tired like this 24 hours a day um i would be falling asleep everywhere i would be nodding off everywhere i remember the first day i went on typing i took it thank god it was my day off because i took it I got up, I took it, had my coffee, and then I blinked, but I forgot to open my eyes again, and I slept for about 20 hours. Um, and so, yeah, um, and that was me on just 25 milligrams. Imagine what it's like on 400, my God, I don't know. I don't know how I managed to go back to uni, get a degree, have a bloody wedding day, I don't know how I did any of that because, you know, and so all this kind of turned me into a bloody zombie. I don't remember much, quite frankly. I was so tired all the time. Um, right. So, yeah, fatigue. I mean, severe fatigue. Think of this most severe fatigue you've ever had. It's like that. So. And that I just cannot deal with. I had things to do. I have a life to live, except I wasn't living it. I was in a dream state all the time. Anyway. Decreased pain sensations. Um, that isn't necessarily what I mean when, um, you know, I wasn't in pain at all. But, um, you know, say if uh, I was on such a high dose, you pinch me, I wouldn't feel it in the same way that I would off quetiapine or a lower dose um so yeah that 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 was dangerous um as you can tell you know pain's there for a reason physical pain is there for a reason uh, you know it kind of needs to be there to keep you alive so um zero sex drive <sighs> and i mean zero at one point i started thinking i was asexual um because you know i had nothing there was nothing there i didn't even like to be touched for god's sake you know like i was i went from being quite a, an affectionate person to, to don't fucking touch me don't touch me don't i don't like it i hate it now i think part of this was because as they were upping my dose i was in trauma therapy um not 
the therapist I'm with now but with a, a different therapist um and so I think part of that was because I was processing all the shit I went through but yeah um yeah it did get worse so you know and it's not really a major side effect but it is something that impacted my relationship so uh TMI I don't know why I'm saying that for this one and not the sex drive one but constipation I've always had problems with my bowels but this was bloody horrendous anyway moving on uh dizziness and I don't mean like oh I'm a little bit lightheaded or like you've just come off like a, a fairground ride or something I mean that the floor swoops up to meet you as you fall down and so um yeah that was really really bad um which also kind of ties in with the loss of coordination now you know you got a loss of coordination and dizziness and decreased pain sensations it's a bloody miracle that i actually didn't pass out um i, I mean i did pass out but i never got severely injured um you know loss of i'd be stumbling all over the place um it was honestly quite dangerous for me to go outside for a walk uh you know so yeah that was not fun um so yeah complete loss of coordination again if you get that you go to the doctor don't do what i did and just think oh it's just a side effect yeah it is just a side effect one that can be deadly so you know and i don't mean that in the sense that it on its own is deadly but if you fall and hit your head because you are dizzy or you are sedated and you can't feel it properly it's a recipe for disaster so talk about that talk about that talk about that uh, oh now this oh yeah also ties in with this occasional inability to move my limbs including severe pins and needles i've never had pins and needles like that before um it was like i was getting paralyzed um and i didn't i didn't like it at all so you know and that again is something that you need to go to the doctor for um yeah i would either be and be unable to move a limb or it'll be like i'm kind of pushing through like gel or something um so that was not fun or contrarily uh, i had occasional now this is emphasis on the occasional akathisia which is uh basically restlessness uh it's a common if odd side effect of antipsychotic drugs um and you know that's sort of like intense fidgeting um you know or sometimes you might just jump up and start pacing for no reason uh the times i got it i was just running up and down my hallway trying to just you know i would suddenly like leap up and i would just run from my kitchen to the front door to the kitchen to the front door to the kitchen so i'd do like these laps and yeah it was it was it was weird it was weird which again that is very dangerous when you are very uncoordinated so yeah so that's it for the uh physical side effects from what i remember um which we're gonna get on to that kind of so yeah memory loss it, it is what it is uh it's what it says psychosis messes with memory loss and antipsychotics seem to mess with my memory um i remember bits and pieces but it's almost like I'm in a dream state. It doesn't feel like my memories. And that is that that's great for delusions, isn't it? That's really wonderful. Um feeling like you I, I feel like my brain has been put into somebody else's body and they the wires have gotten crossed and I just don't quite match up with it because they don't feel like my memories. Um and it's really sad but I barely remember my wedding day. I look at the photos and I'm like, who's that? I don't know who that is. I don't remember that. I don't remember this. I don't remember, I, you know, I remember a little bit of it. I remember snapshots of it, but, and it's, um, it's shit. You know, you should be able to remember your wedding day, but I don't, not really. I remember it kind of, but it's almost like it's just out of reach. I can see it, but it's very blurry. It's almost like it's, um, in this weird haze and i can't quite remember it properly um so you know uh along going along those lines uh dissociation uh 
to a ridiculous point where I would just sit there. I'd sit down, I'd have a coffee. Four hours later, I'd still be there. I, I come back to and I think, and I think that I just, you know, I sit down, put my coffee down on the table, I put my hand around the handle. Four hours later, I'd finally pick it up and it felt like two seconds had gone by, not even that. But, you know, I would just sit there staring at a wall, doing nothing for hours. I, 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 I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, I would lose huge chunks of time in my day um you know and it was it was it was fucking horrible um sorry about that it's um yeah it's really fucking horrific but yeah severe dissociation um another reason why i think i just i don't remember so much of it is because i was just sat there just i wasn't there you know my husband says that I, when I first lowered my dose and I started becoming more alive again, he started crying and he said, oh my God, I've got my wife back. Because I would just sit there and I just looked blank. I was, it was like I checked out. I wasn't there anymore. And, you know, uh, you know, and also I was very confused all the time, especially when I kind of come back to again you know I would kind of be like whoa what the hell you know like I'd be I'd be kind of like I could kind of remember going somewhere but I wouldn't quite be able to recall how I got there I'd be like I remember thinking I need to go to Tesco for example and I'd vaguely remember getting in the car I'd vaguely remember arriving I wouldn't remember the car journey this happened once actually i didn't remember the car journey i was like oh okay uh, what the hell are we doing here we've just left how the hell did we get here you know so that was very confusing it was very confusing jumps in time um or i'd just be confused in general because um a symptom of schizophrenia is disorganized thoughts disorganized everything um and so i would get very confused very easily but Something I want to point out with this is that to schizophrenia, there are what are called positive and negative symptoms. Now, positive doesn't mean these are good symptoms. What it means is positive as in added to. So something that is added to my reality. So hallucinations, delusions, disorganized thinking, um, mania, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so, and then the negative symptoms, if positive means added to and negative is uh, you take it away. So that's taking away emotion, taking away being able to speak, thinking, all that kind of stuff. So the with quetiapine, the positive symptoms were not, they weren't gone completely. They were still there, but they were easier to kind of ignore i guess or kind of deal with the negative symptoms got so much worse so much worse um you know and like i said i've dealt with schizophrenia since childhood so i kind of knew how to deal with the nasty positive symptoms but you know i i, I would rather deal with the positive symptoms with the negative symptoms than just the negative symptoms because <laughs> um it was just horrendous so you know all of these generally are the negative symptoms um so you know like i said confusion dissociation memory loss you know that is quite literally taking things away memory loss uh anhedonia which is basically it is kind of it's not really no emotion, but it's kind of not being able to feel pleasure in anything. You're just so fucking bored all the time. And you just, you have no motivation to do anything. And so you just lie there and you're just like, you know, why would you want to watch your favourite movie? You don't like it much anymore. You don't feel like watching it because it's shit. Why would you want to do any art? Don't like it. Makes you feel like shit. 
you know or it's not even that it makes you feel like shit it's just that it's just so fucking boring nothing feels you feel like you're never going to be happy again you feel like you're never going to feel anything again uh, and along with that comes the severe depression and along with that comes with the increased suicidal ideation now you know i was too fucked up to be able to do anything but that doesn't mean that those thoughts went away all i would do in these times sit there lying or lying in bed looking at the wall thinking about killing myself that was all i did um a couple of times i did try i'm not going to go into that completely but let's just say that the way i did you know with this and the physical symptoms of decreased pain or even if i wasn't trying to kill myself i was just harming myself i could have very easily accidentally killed myself you know i'm not going to go into detail but i think you can probably guess what i'm implying here you know so if i did hurt myself because of the increased suicidal ideation the fucking severe depression i haven't been this depressed in such a fucking long time um but yeah um that with sometimes i would come to after maybe a bit of a, a bit having a bit of a mad one um and i'd be like where the fuck did these come from i don't remember doing it or i do remember it but in a very roundabout way in the sense that it wasn't me doing it um or it was it's very hard to describe um but yeah i i've you know it was just yeah so no pain self-harm suicidal ideation you can kind of guess why that could have get, gotten very bad very fast and a couple of times it nearly did get very bad very fast anyway um this kind of goes along with the feeling of moving through gel, but feeling like I'm underwater. Uh, and I want to talk about what that, you know, colours seem duller. You know, I remember when I first, I started decreasing my dose and I got under 300 for the first time in a very long time. And I just looked at I was like, wow, have the trees always been that green? Have the, has the sky always been that blue? You know, it was like, excuse me, hang on. It was like um, the world was muffled. Um, my taste was decreased. And because of this, I developed a very bad sugar addiction. Um, and I would dump salt on everything, like way too much, you know. And that, along with a really bad heart rate and not great blood pressure, is just not too great, really, is it? So um, even si sounds were quieter. People would talk to me and i'd be like you know i mean i'm half deaf anyway but again it, it got worse so everything it felt like i was underwater and i could see what was going on but it just wasn't quite you know or i liken it to maybe being in a cloud i can see what's going on but i can't quite break through and be there um as well as flat um effect which is the inability to you know it, it literally flat makes you you know you don't emote physically you know i could find something funny and i'd just be looking at you with just a blank face or understand others emo emotions you know my husband smiles at me and i'm like oh my god that's terrifying what the fuck is that face for you know and it was like my brain didn't quite even though i knew smile means happy i i, I couldn't quite put those two dots together in that moment um, I do remember thinking, like, oh my god, he's turning into a wolf or something. It was ridiculous. Um, difficulty concentrating. Um, this, I actually don't remember myself. I was told that I could not concentrate. Um, and I, I, you know, so I can't really go into that. But this is just something I was told. I don't remember it. Um, but again, I have no idea how I got through uni and everything. Uh I don't know how I managed to do three years of education on this on such a higher, you know, like dose of this drug. I really don't. So 
I don't remember anything about the difficulty concentrating, but it doesn't surprise me, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, increased paranoia and panic attacks. So this is actually some of the positive symptoms that were worsened by this drug is the pa paranoia and the panic attacks. Um, and I think it was because sometimes it was that underwater effect and I'd be outside and suddenly it was almost like my brain would kind of zap and kind of come out of it for two seconds and this wall of sound would hit me. Now I'm autistic, you know, it's, you know, autistic, schizophrenic. It just means that I'm very sexy and an absolute genius. So that's all you need to know about that. That's what you need to know about those two disorders. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I would panic a lot um, because of not being able to really understand what was going on or where I was or who I was, um, you know. Um, so, yeah, and the paranoia was so bad sometimes. My agoraphobia got really bad for the first time in years. Uh, I'd be getting over that pretty well. Um, but agoraphobia, I became a complete and utter recluse again. I just stayed in my house. I was too terrified to... I would try and force myself to go outside and I'd have a panic attack and so I wouldn't go outside. Um, you know, I would... Now, thankfully, I did an art degree, uh, which is very self-disciplined. Um, it's a lot harder than people like to make it out to be. Maybe I'll talk about it another time, about what it's actually like being an art student. But yeah, difficulty holding conversation, partially because of the flat effect partially because of the feeling like I was underwater and partially because I was just, I couldn't be arsed. I just couldn't be arsed. I was too tired. I get, I was too tired. I was too sad. I was too depressed. I was too sick of these thoughts whirling around my head about killing myself in very graphic ways. I'm not going to share that, but, <laughs> um, impaired decision making, which just, I was either very impulsive or I could not make a decision at all. Uh, so that's all i can say about that one really isn't it um and lastly hopefully lastly unless i remember something else um inability to correctly care for myself such as showering eating etc and the eating i think was partially because um i would be on like i said this 24-hour cycle and i would take my drugs take my drugs you know my medication you know what i mean and about um, 15 minutes later, the hunger would hit. And so I'd, binge and binge, I'd probably binge about three days worth of calories. And then I wouldn't want to eat. So the next day, as the drug was wearing off, then I would take it and then I would binge and binge. It was a horrible, horrible cycle. Um, and so, yeah, I think I didn't want to eat because of that. And also the nausea. I don't know if the binging caused the nausea or the nausea was caused by just the quetiapine i don't know maybe a bit of both you know i don't know uh, not wanting to shower this kind of goes back to the abolition which is the absolute lack of motivation um you know if you are depressed you, you know if you if you are depressed you know damn well what it's like trying to shower when you want to kill yourself <laughs> Or sometimes I would think I showered because I remember thinking, right, I'm going to go take a shower. And then later on, my husband would say, did you shower today? And I'd be like, yeah, of course I did. And he'd be like, later on, he'd be like, no, you haven't. I can tell because the bath's not wet. The flannel, you know, your face wash cloth thing is bone dry. And I'd be like, no, I... I, I swear I showered, I remember thinking I was going to shower, but apparently I didn't, so, yeah, so, yeah, I went through absolute hell, and I would not have gone on this drug had I known that all these negative symptoms would have become so much worse, as I said, I can deal with the positive ones, I can deal with the negative ones, I cannot deal with, you know, I can deal with, it's almost like, when the positive ones are there, they're not, it, they almost balance each other out. Whereas, or maybe it's just because I'm used to having both of them at the same time. When one's kind of lessened or taken away, I'm like, good grief. You know, this was, I would, <laughs> I know you're not supposed to say things like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I would 
much much rather i will be psychotic than depressed i you know or manic or whatever i would much rather be that than depressed um now mania isn't a a typical symptom of um schizophrenia uh that is generally like um you know when you think of manic people you think of people with bipolar disorder but um you know i get mania i have no idea why uh, i don't have bipolar but yeah if i did have bipolar i think that maybe this drug would actually help me um but yeah so that's all i have for now now please if you do have as i said at the beginning and oh my goodness i've been talking for a very very long time 45 minutes oh my goodness um but yeah 45 minutes ago and i said to you um i said to you if you have these issues go to your doctor speak to your doctor this is information that i am giving you now do what you like with it but for me go to a doctor don't go off your drug like i said that can be dangerous or just fucking horrible you get insomnia and don't you know do it under a doctor's supervision that is the most important thing is you have to do these things under a doctor's supervision don't take you know like i said don't take a youtube video as medical advice for fuck's sake that's just ridiculous um so please speak to your doctor they are far more qualified than i they can you know they can do your bloods they can talk to you about this stuff much better than i can so if you're on this drug i'd also I would recommend you insist on having maybe monthly reviews even if you're not upping your dose or changing anything just keep having monthly reviews just so you can go there and say and like I said track your your sim track your side effects um in a diary or a notebook or whatever and so every month you can go there and be like, right, these have stayed the same or this has gotten worse or here was a new side effect that I got. So keep track of it and please, please get monthly reviews because I didn't. I didn't. I would only ever bring up these things when it got so bad that I was either going to kill myself or I couldn't breathe or I was feeling nauseous every second of the day. Um. So, yeah, please speak to your doctor. Um and think long and hard about upping this dose if you are schizophrenic i don't know if this affects other people with different disorders so i can't comment on that but if you are schizophrenic think twice about going on a higher dose and speak to your doctor you know really think about it you know think am i prepared for this eventuality because i wasn't i wasn't prepared for it and i cry sometimes every, I, when i first started lowering my dose and i started coming alive again i cried every <laughs> every um every day because i was like oh my god this is what it feels to be alive again uh i don't feel like i'm nearly 24 i feel like i'm still 18 because i've lost all that time so yeah just please if you take one thing away from this video it's be careful on psychiatric drugs i said that i've said this quite a few times now because i saw it on a tumblr post and it's really apt it was a chemical lobotomy or a chemical straight jacket and that's how it felt so please speak to your doctor and say if i get this eventual side effect what will we do can we lower the dose Some, something like that just speak to your doctor they know best and yeah and if this drug does work for you that is amazing i wish i had that um but don't get scared because of this this is just information that i want to give you anyway i'm going to stop waffling um i bleh, i really need a drink i need some coffee and yeah so if i don't see you all before christmas uh i might i don't know but if i don't see you all before christmas then merry merry christmas or happy holidays or if you don't celebrate anything have a wonderful season i'm sure schools will still let you off if you're in school <laughs> have a wonderful season of whatever or have a nice day have a nice month but yes uh i am going to 
the dreaded Saishland or England as some people call it um, in like a week and a half or something um, and so maybe I will do a bit of a short sort of like a compilation of clips taken there obviously it won't be Tales from Wales but you know it's um, yeah so I'm going there to see my birth mother um, but yeah so if I don't speak to you before Christmas have a good one have a happy holidays or have a good day have a good day and stay safe um and yeah that's all i have to say really anyway i'm i'm going away now um have